I am talking with uh, Alex Kashukov. He's the CEO of a company called Natrion, and they've come up with a very interesting uh, materials development for batteries. And, and Alex, my understanding is you can take just about any kind of uh, non-solid state battery and, and convert it into a solid state one. Is that right? Yeah, exactly, John. So um, our technology is a material we call Lysic, and this replaces the liquid components that would typically be in a rechargeable lithium battery with a, a solid material, uh, thereby making it a solid-state battery with significantly enhanced performance and safety. Um, and yeah, there have been methods of doing this in the past, but what I think we've really finally figured out is uh, a way to do this with uh, the existing battery uh, manufacturing processes and techniques and really make it as easy as possible to make a transition to solid state batteries and make them as scalable and low cost as possible for EVs and so forth. You called it LISIC, is that right? What is that? Yes. Yeah, LISIC stands for lithium solid ion composite. So uh, this is a composite material composed of both a polymer and, and ceramic materials. Uh, and it gives it the you know, mechanical properties, the flexibility and the low thickness that's required for some of these battery manufacturing processes. And then the ceramic materials offer the uh, the fast charging performance and the high energy and density inside the battery cell. Uh, so it's really the, the combination and the synergetic marriage of these two types of materials that allows us to accomplish this. And you make the Lysic in, in big sheets as a, a, a big reams of paper. Exactly. Yeah. So it's uh, what we ultimately end up shipping to the battery manufacturers and the automakers is a roll of this Lysic film uh, and you unspool it and feed it directly into the roll to roll battery production uh, process. So it's a rolling up an anode cathode and all the materials in the bag, the, the jelly roll is so many people. Exactly. Yep. Just part one layer of the jelly roll now. Exactly. Yeah. That's pretty wild. How'd you come up with this idea? Yeah, as you know, we, we started uh, about six years ago. Uh, when we started it, what we were originally trying to do was very different. We were working on what's called a sodium battery. So the idea was we'd use sodium instead of lithium to uh, dramatically lower the cost and, and improve the safety. And it was a nice idea. The, the problem was that uh, sodium supply chains are still pretty immature and there's some other lingering issues. And so around COVID, we... Uh, made this pivot to develop and, and focus on this lysic material and uh, really what fed into all of that was the feedback we were getting from interacting with potential customers the big battery manufacturers the automakers uh, and taking that input uh, it directly into our material development process in the lab so so if i'm a battery maker and i'm making battery cells uh and i want to use your material and go with a solid state how difficult is it to convert my factory yeah, so the uh, the liquid components that go into the battery cell today, it's the way it works is you have sort of this porous membrane or cloth that's imbued or soaked with the liquid. And so the process is already set up that you have the cloth uh, being fed in. Uh, so for the manufacturer to use our material, it's as simple as replacing that roll of porous membrane that they're using today uh, and substituting it with our a roll of our Lysic. Everything else, the all the other equipment and the rest of the process can remain the same. So it really is a, a drop-in uh, solution. That's impressive. Um, so how does this affect battery performance? Yeah, uh, so uh, just going into uh, any of the existing state-of-the-art lithium-ion cell chemistries today, we can almost instantly realize a 10 to 15% improvement in energy density. So how much energy is being uh, stored pound for pound. And then when the really one of the most exciting aspects of our material is it enables the manufacturers to start using more advanced materials in other parts of the battery cell. So there we know about all of these exciting uh, material systems that we simply haven't been able to leverage because they're incompatible with the liquids that are in use in the battery today. Well, now with the Lysic going in, uh, the manufacturer can have that compatibility. And so, you know, we've demonstrated with a few of our partners already that you, the Lysic can be used to enhance energy density by as much as 50% or more. So that's, you know, the same size battery in an electric car now offering 50% more driving range on a single charge. 
Mm -hmm. What to do to the cost of the battery? Yeah, so that's that's the other great thing with the drop-in functionality of, of this solution and the fact that we're not making significant processor um, uh, processor material changes in other parts of the cell that uh, actually in most cell chemistries we're able to maintain and, and most cell form factors we're able to maintain cost parity on a dollars per kilowatt hour basis, which is what matters. Uh, so virtually zero implementation cost. So that's that's incredible. So if you were able to get fifty percent more energy density, and and the cost is essentially the same, you you could cut the battery size in half and maintain the range that you've got. Yeah. So most of our EV customers that we're working with, that that'd be the goal is to actually miniaturize the battery pack um, while achieving the same uh, driving range and. That you know, it's less resource intensive, and it makes the assembling the car much more affordable. Because right now, the battery is seventy five percent of the cost of of the vehicle. Yeah, no kidding. How about charging? Does it affect charging at all? Yeah. Um, so the thing about increasing energy density is that it it also means you can increase charging speeds. Um, and we're also and one thing that we want to do today that we haven't been able to quite accomplish is what's called extra fast charging XFC. So that is that would be the capability to charge up, you know, to a hundred percent within ten fifteen minutes, right? And that's that's really what um, a lot of auto consumers want. Uh, and we're working on a second generation iteration of our Lysic material where we're going to have that XFC capability, and we hope to roll that out in around twenty twenty seven. And uh, cold weather performance, does it enhance that as well? Yeah. Well, so we're we're based in Illinois, so we, we know all about it, how uh, EVs, yeah, can, right now they you know, really just could shut down if it's cold enough. And um, with, uh, right now, with, what happens in a regular battery cell today is the liquid can literally freeze inside the battery cell and, and, and the cell is, you know, rendered, uh, you know, non-usable. And, uh with our Lysic material in there, the Lysic doesn't have the same problem. And uh, when you go to zero degrees, you're only losing maybe 10% of uh, the power performance that you would anticipate at, at you know, regular room temperature conditions. Hmm. And uh, how about durability? How, how long does this last? Yeah, and most, most batteries that we would integrate into, again, were either accomplishing parity as far as how many charge discharge duty cycles you can get out of the battery. Um, and since certain chemistries, we can achieve an incremental improvement, actually. Mm. So, I, I mean, it's just win, 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 all the way down the checklist here, it sounds like. Yeah, well, like I said, um, we're still lacking that XFC, and a lot of automakers um, are looking for that. So we're working hard in the lab to make that happen. Uh, we couldn't do it all with the, the first-generation product, but... Uh, uh, yeah, and, and now really the task for us is to scale production and get to volume as, as quickly as we can because, um, I mean, it's, it's, uh, there's going to be a huge demand from, from EVs as uh, the industry ramps up. I think you got an, an amazing story here. You're also a winner of the GAMAC Award. The, I think the Global Automotive uh, Mobility Innovation Challenge. Yep. And uh, uh, how's... How's that helped business or has it? I mean, has it brought more attention to this? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, us being a small startup out of Champaign, Illinois, uh, you know, it's it's tough making inroads uh, with, you know, the big auto OEMs. Um, and that that's, I think, where Gamic has been instrumental for us is uh, helped facilitate relationships and, and get us meetings with key decision makers who could actually make things happen on the other side. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a first time founder right out of college. And so I haven't really had much opportunity to see behind the curtain with, with these OEMs. And so, uh, Gamic's been, been super supportive in that regard. And otherwise, yeah, definitely the, um, the, the exposure, um, uh, and also, uh, the channels for, for additional funding has been highly useful. But, you know, the big question is, uh, wh what have been the automakers or battery makers reaction? Uh, uh, I imagine they're at least asking for test samples. Is it going past that? Yeah. Um, you know, unfortunately, I can't really name names, but we are working with, with some of the major uh, some of the major 
automotives and uh, actively sampling out material for them to test and qualify and evaluate. And uh, for example, just recently, uh, we were engaged with a major OEM who you know, initially wanted to just integrate our material into one cell. Uh, and after the first battery of tests, um, you know, got so excited, they now want to do three different cells. So essentially triple the scope of work, uh, which is exciting, but um, yeah, this, uh, we, we've got our, our work cut out for us. Yeah, yeah no doubt about it. But, uh, you know, when you have a better product, they'll be the path to your door. And it sounds to me like you've got that better product. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, it's um, you know, we we were pleased with where the technology is at, and now the challenge is getting the production and making this as as in as large volumes as possible at as low cost as we can, and still maintaining the quality that these OEMs come have come to expect. Well, Alex, thanks for your time. I know I and the AutoLine audience are going to keep a close eye on Natrion because I think you guys have got a, a fantastic concept here. Appreciate it. Thanks, John. Yeah, thanks for having me on here. Grateful for it.